Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 4 of my Total War Warhammer 2 Vampire Coast Let's Play as Luther Harkin. Remember as always to check the description to find the playlist and any other relevant information such as the mods I'm using, music, or PC specs. Episodes of this series are posted on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please do consider sharing it, liking the videos, and commenting to help the series grow if you like it. Now if you don't like it, just continue to hate watch, that's totally fine. Right, so in the last episode we raced deep into the Lustrian jungle with Luther Harkin attacking the cult of Sotek. We had just gotten done winning a decisive victory over their legendary lord to Hennawan, so we were sort of racing ahead so they could get to them before they could recover. All was going pretty well, we had raised a settlement and pushed towards their final settlement, but a beastman horde had actually sieged it and had it on lockdown. Meanwhile on the coast, Penny Wake, one of our lords, was positioned at the Blood Swamps, ready to defend against Itza, another Lizardman faction who had waged war on us during our attack on the Cult of Sotek. Now surprisingly, the Order of Loremasters under Teclis also waged war with us, and we managed to pull off a quick ambush with Penny Wake, defeating the powerful wizard as he was en route back to his capital. Now as Luther's attention was turning to the High Elves on the coast, the Beastmen Horde was actually defeated, and the Cult of Sotek has begun mustering a new army, which has left us at this crossroads facing three enemies all right next to each other. So we have to decide who we're going to focus on and what we're going to commit to. Spoiler alert, I've already made the decision. But just for a quick recap, during the end turn sequence, we actually beat Teclis right around here with Penny. Now their remnant army, their recovering army under Lerithriel, is just sitting here taking attrition, no doubt trying to find a way out of the twists and turns of the corrupted jungle, trying to get out of there. We also then have Gorok, the legendary lord in charge of Itza, with 18 units in this army, some of them seemingly taking damage from attrition, no doubt, who is in full range of getting to the Blood Swamps within one turn. We then have Luther here, being harassed by the skink chief hero, and another Itza army under Rematak clan, sitting outside of Zlan Huapek, which is the Cult of Sotek's final city. So they managed to beat the Beastmen Horde just in the previous turn, so they're no doubt licking their wounds, Speaking of licking wounds, Tehenawan has licked his wounds and he's back in charge. So they're both raising armies. There's two separate armies here, both of them mustering. So ultimately, I've come to the conclusion that we have to stamp on whatever we can as fast as possible to eliminate a faction. There's only one faction with one town, and that's the Cult of Sotek. So I'm going to do everything I can to put them down in the ground. And then raise them back up again as our own army. <laughs> So we have Luther Harkin here. Unfortunately, I think I said in the last episode that he could get here, but he can't. Not within one turn. As you were. On a regular march, we actually can't reach there. So what I'm going to do instead so is just raid our way in. Forward. So we're full strength, which is great. We have some pretty good units. We have our Morngulls, our animated hulks with scurvy dogs, a lot of missiles, the central body of our army, the missiles, Sir Crystalliorn looking after those guys, and then some anti-large that's helping us deal with the lizardmen, and then obviously cannons, which is great for bringing the enemy to us. Or if they want to sit on a hill, it's great too. We get to fire on them. We obviously have Luther Harkin there at the head of that army. So, back towards here, Penny Wake is actually leveled up, because obviously in the end turn sequence is where we fought that battle. So we'll give her some skills. I was having a look around, I'm... Not the greatest of tacticians and statistical statistical and anal analyzer. God, I can't even speak. I'm not the greatest of linguist either, I suppose. But I was having a look at this one, the hunger. As the vampires rip apart their victims, they feast on the blood that spills forth, gaining in strength and lost stamina. Now, <clears throat> it says its duration lasts 60 seconds. It's a spell that you use on yourself. But I think it's like a it's a passive ability, yeah, so it's like a almost like an augment in a way. It just sits there. And it says that it recharges if engaged in melee. So I'm guessing how this works is that if you want to heal, it says it restores six hit points per second. It gives you a boost to speed, missile resistance, melee attack, and vigor. So I'm guessing what we gotta do is just quickly throw her into melee and then pull her out, and then she'll heal for a minute. Because it does say it lasts 60 seconds. I hope it works that way. I don't know if it works that way for sure. But I'm going to assume it does, so we're going to get that one, so that she has an option to heal herself. Now, we also have the Invocation in the Heck, but I'm going to now get the Gaze of Nagash. Mostly just because I think it's pretty cool. Bolts of dark magic leap from the caster's eyes, withering flesh and blackening the bone beneath. 250 meter range, a 50% miscast chance though, which is actually incredibly high. So there's a 50-50 chance you damage yourself using this, but it's pretty cool though. It fires 10 projectiles, 
each dealing 100... Well, that's the icon for weapon strength. 100 weapon strength, armor piercing damage, 200. And 100 weapon strength, 50 explosion damage, armor piercing. Causing magical damage, good against large combatants, good from a high angle. Oh, I see. It does 100 and 200. Yeah, I see. I see. I get it. Cool. Yeah, so we'll get that. Just because it's also fun. Um, then I also noticed she doesn't have a weapon, but we have one available. So we'll equip her with the Fencer's Blade for melee attack 6, melee defense 6. So obviously the Vampire Lords aren't really accustomed to fighting hand-to-hand. -hand. They have guns. They can do both. Um, and we'll gear her a little bit more for fighting hand-to-hand, -hand just because she can do that replenishment stuff. But I also want to gear her more to being a spellcaster, because, well, obviously that's an obvious thing to do anyway. But she did defeat Teclis with her famous ambush. And because of that, she has a cooldown to spells 10% and an increase to the Winds of Magic Reserve. So that's just kind of nice to use it and play up to that. So what I want to do with her first is attack Larithriel and then make it back to the Blood Swamps if we can. So let's go. Right, so obviously we're just going to auto-resolve this. It's just a Lord and the remnants of the army we defeated at the end of the last battle. Seems like it's going to be fine. Oh wow, that's actually quite a lot of money, 800 gold. And we got a new item, a Trickster's Shard, which has been automatically equipped. We leveled up to level 6. Trickster's Shard, a shard of pure aqua. Its surface ripples with a malevolent curse bestowed upon it by the Trickster. Any magic users nearby will surely suffer. This is so coincidentally good. Miscast base chance is negative 20. So that actually helps with our missiles that we just got. Winds of Magic Power Reserve increase further. And Ability Trickster Shard creates a hex area on the ground. Affects enemies in range of 500 meters. We can only do it up to 40 meters. But it gives the enemies 100% miscast chance. So you guys you want to throw it down on Lords and Spellcasters. Tough one to use, I would say. But it's pretty cool nonetheless. Does it only last 16 seconds, though? Yeah, that's quite quite a short amount of time. Like, you have to hope that the AI, or that the enemy, excuse me, use a spell within those 16 seconds, I guess, right? Anyway, we could assimilate the captives, take on 500 gold, or get extra loyalty. We're on 5 loyalty already, so I'm going to take the money. A value lies outside of the break. Enemy killed. Larithriel. A new mission has been issued, the Riddles of, Riddles of Ranald. Oh, so we've got another... Sea. We just saw that. We've got another... Treasure map. They're all the riddles of Ronald. This one's in the far east this time. We already saw the one up in Norska and the one in the Southlands. Seven now, what I was thinking of doing just now, can we do it? We actually can. I'm going to raise a bloated corpse. And we're going to call her Larithriel. <laughs> the seas are mine. Oh my god, all my effects are kicking into gear with all my hotkeys. There we go, I think I fixed it. <laughs> that just shows you how what the game looks like without those things on, to an extent. So there we go, we have our bloated corpse, Larithriel. So we put her down in the ground, we've raised her back up as a bloated corpse. Uh, now, unfortunately, we can't make it back, so I'm going to force That's march. Is that a good idea? Is that a terrible idea? We won't be able to recruit if the we force march. And we can't get in range, so I think ultimately we're going to have to Vampire force march. The waves. I have arrived. So let her go back there. So Gorok, as we saw, has 18 units. We have 13. A little bit under strength, but the town the has how many? 10. So we've got 10. So we're, we've got 23 in total. I reckon we could take him. I mean, it is a legendary lord, though, so maybe a bit stronger than usual. Just get another, just get another melee unit, then. Let's just prepare ourselves for that. On the other side of things, <clears throat> My mind yeah, we've already just done our raiding, so that's good. Those are the world events. We looked at all that. The only other thing to check then is our objective. So currently, chapter-wise, we've actually done every single sub uh, objective of the primary objectives. We've done all the bonus ones. Uh, the one that we never, never read was the crazy, not stupid. Research three technologies. Luther's squabbling personality sometimes drive him to being the loosest of cannons, but in his more lucid phases, He's at most a wily commander with a mind that can take great advantage of wisdom, knowing that it can often lead to greater riches in the future. Excuse me. 
So I'm actually not sure where you look to see what personality state he is in. I've forgotten what he's currently, how he's currently feeling, as it as it were, and which mind is present. Don't know if it says it anywhere. Oh, there, there. He's the narcissist right now. Okay, cool. At least I know where to check. So he has the spell Van Geist Revenge. That's the big ship one. So that's pretty cool. All right, so he's a bit of a narcissist. I can't relate at all. Um, now, we don't have any infamy to get another technology, so we'll just continue with Salvage Cruise. And basically, next turn, it's all going to be about how do these armies move? How do they recruit? Where does Gorok go? Is he going to challenge us? And then pushing towards Lan Huapek, if we can, and trying to take it. Now, there's an office slot available. Oh, yeah. Penny Wake is level 5. Most of these are open to level 5 lords, but they have to have good loyalty. Now, she has good loyalty. She's level 5 loyalty, and she needs level 5 to get in. That's perfect. Five loyalty, rank five. Now, the reason I keep hovering over this one is because this is the one I actually looked at in between episodes of assigning someone to. Extra movement range for all armies, 10%. I think that'll be good to go with. Reduction of uh, casualties. So it's all armies, not just her own. Some of these slots only affect the, you know, the Lord, the Lord's personal army. Now, the fleet treasure is pretty tempting because it gives you 10% income from all buildings, reducing the cost of rights as well. Tempting, but I don't think I really need the money that badly. Like, that badly. This one's pretty interesting, too. Missile strength, 10% for pirate gunnery mob and rotting Prometheans gunnery mob units. Extra ammunition and reload time reductions, too. Casualty replenishment rate. Just of the Lord's Army. I'm going to go with this one because it is a global. This one's global, too, but... I think this will be the first one. Then the next person we get will make them the fleet treasurer. She would make sense as a treasurer as well because her initial trait did buff the uh, income in her place. Not that it matters. It's just thematically it kind of fits. Uh, okay, right, pretty... We've laid our cards out, right? The die is cast. We'll have to see what happens. Let's end the turn. Alrighty, very peculiar movement from Itza. They have pulled out their army away from the cult of Sotek and back into their own territory. And then Gorok sailed right past the blood swamps and is either heading towards the awakening or perhaps the sparsely defended pox marsh which we can actually upgrade it would take five turns though so it's not like we're going to get that garrison before he could potentially get there it actually creates quite an interesting problem because penny wake isn't good enough to be able to challenge him at sea if we go to the awakening well, the awakening has a huge garrison so that place is fine if but if we move to the awakening he'll obviously turn around and go to the blood swamps if we leave him, he can make it all the way up to here, and then we could give chase to try and get to the Pox March before him. Maybe Force March will get there before he does. I don't know. Ultimately, we just can't move, though, right now. What we could do is recruit, though. I'll save my recruitment, though, for what we're going to do next, which is fight a battle here, because obviously we're going to get money and stuff from that, depending on how it goes. Um, but if Luther, if we lose, then we're going to have to raise Luther again somewhere else, which actually wouldn't be the worst thing, but... It would be, because we wouldn't take the Cult of Sotek out. Hmm, didn't expect that. That was interesting. I mean, it's strange. I was so certain that they'd they'd go towards me, but I guess not. And they're not allies. They are both lizardmen, and they've been in joint wars together, but they're not allies. So Gorok's armies don't have to help the Cult of Sotek, I guess. Now, that is also bizarre. They were both mustering, and yet only one of them got one unit. They had four and one, now they got four and two. Well, it's great for us. So let's get involved. So we'll attack the weaker army and see how it all shakes out. Alright, since it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory, we can see what they have. Feral cold ones, some damage for a couple of their units here. Oh, nice. Half strength, well not half strength necessarily, but quite weakened Croxagores. So that's going to help us greatly. And then we have Tehenna one again, he's full strength. A missile specialist, two extra lords. The lords are going to be the ones that are going to be really tricky to beat. Alright, well, let's go. Alrighty, we are loaded in. Let's do a quick gamble straight away. We only have 11 for the Winds of Magic. 
damn. <laughs> Gambling never pays, but we know that sometimes it does. That's quite a fun little fact, I guess, insider info about this particular map. This is one of the first maps that was actually working in Total Warhammer 2. I used to work at Creative Assembly, for those who don't know. And I worked in marketing. And in the marketing first reveal of gameplay, I think we used this settlement, uh, apart from the Fallen Gates. That was just the one of the, the demos, I guess, at the time. It was one of the actual in-world maps. And I chose it because of that waterfall over there. It's got a lovely rainbow effect to it. But at the moment, we're fighting at night time. So it's not really showing its full quality, I guess, at the moment. But uh, yeah, this is actually one of the very first videos on the Total War channel focusing on gameplay for this game. It was recorded by me, and it was recording using this map. I always just think of this whenever I come across this map. It's a bit nostalgic for me. All the way back in 2017. All right, so. So we're going to be fighting just the first... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go start deployment. We're just going to be fighting the little lord here, Azet Dizan, and then his feral cold ones. Then his armies are going to be coming in from over there. So that's actually kind of cool. Maybe we could rush up and get to him first. Or he might even charge right towards us. We'll have to see. So we get the first five gunnery mob units. Lay them out right here. Just bring them in just a little bit. Now, just really quickly before we jump into this battle, um, there's a few comments mentioning that, like, my gunners haven't been very effective. They haven't. I think they're going to be more effective as time goes on, considering now we've got them some experience, and we've given them technologies and buffs within the Lord's army, and Sir Chris is here too. So now they're going to start getting a lot more, and uh, becoming a lot more effective. Well, people were saying that, no, no, it's because that they're obstructed all the time. So I looked through the footage, I was like, were they, you know, was I not paying attention that much? And, and a little bit, a little bit they were obstructed, but not as much as I think people are maybe making out to give them the results of, like, how they had very few kills. Being obstructed, you can actually see it. So on the unit icons down on the bottom here, you see these little blue tabs above the unit cards themselves. That blue tab will appear, and a little bow and arrow symbol will appear, and it'll be orange when they're obstructed. I'm sure many people know this, just for those who don't. And that means that something's blocking their view, and they don't want to shoot their own men. Now, it's kind of complicated because if you're up on a hill, they'll fire down no problem. If a melee unit's in front of them, they'll probably not fire but sometimes they will if it's completely flat ground because even though they're using guns this isn't really a traditional game or realistic kind of game their shots do arc even with guns you'll notice it they do arc they drop very fast so they sort of do fire up and over not like crazy not like arrows obviously but there is a bit of an arc to it so if you're even just slightly on an incline they'll typically fire over the other stipulation to this is that if there is a large unit within the unit that you want to shoot so let's say this unit is a hostile unit and they're fighting me. My guys will fire into that because there is a pretty high chance that they're going to hit these guys. They're bigger. So you'll see that they won't be obstructed. So anyway, I'm just, I'm just mentioning this because on looking at it back, they weren't obstructed that often, in my opinion. Anyway, it didn't feel like they were very often obstructed. Uh, I think they're just weak, but maybe I'm wrong. But I did look through the footage. So I was like, oh yeah, maybe. Because they, they were only getting like seven kills. <laughs> it seemed pretty low. Right, anyway. We're going to put the Morngulls out where they like to be. In the dark. This is our first time actually playing a night battle. Or a darkened battle. Now we've got... I'm going to put two anti-large on the wings here. Another two anti-large on the other wings, the pole arms. We have our animated hulks chilling behind them. I'm gonna put the dogs out on the left side. Are they hidden out there? Yep. Uh, Luther on the left. Chris in the middle. Now the reason I've got a second line of guns is for very much that reason. When these first lines get hit by something, these guys should keep firing. In theory. I'll put them on a hill. All right, I think we're ready to go. Let's begin. So he's going to move everyone forward a little bit. Cannons are firing. Maybe fire at the uh, bigger target. Just move them slightly. It looks like they're going straight for it. 
Fire on that Lord. Chris, augment. Oh, they're actually, he's actually over a slight hill now. He's actually nearly dead. Aside from his power with Luther. Oh, he's actually just run away. Great. The feral cold ones just charged straight in there. Sorry, I meant to move these. I was too busy zooming in. <laughs> Can we get him? Can we finish him off? Chris, take the shot. Take the shot! Nice. Alright, that was easy. He took out the first little battle straight away. He just sacrificed himself, essentially, didn't he? Alright, we'll just straighten these guys out. That's fine. The next army's on the way. Just for the sake of a, these darkened battles, I think I'll enable this so we can just see everyone. Is that better? Although it kind of breaks the immersion. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, I think I'll turn it off. I don't like it actually. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to do this frequently though, just so we can get a good grasp on everything. This cannons are still firing just fine as well. You can scout out with the uh, deck droppers. And we want to be aiming on those Croxagores actually, because they're going to be the ones that are weak. They'll only take a few hits to go down. Let's get Chris over to the left side, boost these guys. We can also give some ammo back to the cannons if they need them. Yeah, there we go, we're firing now. That's Tehenawan himself. We'll send in the uh, pole arms because they should be able to handle that. Waiting to use the Morngulls, waiting to use the dogs. Let's use uh, Van Geist's Revenge with Luther. Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Time for the Morn Gulls to come out and play. Let's send in the animated hulks, too. Not seeing much uh, obstructions on the bottom. Happy, to, ha happy about that. Chris, take the shot. Oh, took too long. He has to turn. No, he's going to get smashed. I have to stop zooming in for a second. Where are those dogs? My dogs are dead. Oh no. They must have been attacked. I didn't even notice. So what do we have here? Feral cold ones there. We're still attacking the Croxagores. Power siphon him so he can't go too far. Let's start firing on him with Chris as well. Chris ran after him in melee. Whoops. Need to be more proactive in bogging these guys down. Now, I'm missing... Where are these guys? Yeah, they're still doing a good job. Tehenna one is... It's taken ages to go down. He is large, so the pole arm should be doing good on him. I think he's just quite powerful. Firing on those cold ones at least, which is good. They've actually just broken as well, which is nice to see. Morngulls versus Croxagores, who wins? Oh, sorry, it's animated hulks, my bad. Alright, let's get the animated hulks to slam into the Saurus Warriors. Should have had them in there a long time ago. Yes. 
God, they look like they're... Are they tired? They're diminished. It looks like there's not much actually still fighting. I'll go, the skinks keep coming in and out of view. I guess that's the problem with them. I can't get over to Hanawan still kicking ass with two pole arm units on him. All right, see if we can use Chris's special shot again. Oh, he missed. Second one hit though. The second one was quite good. Yeah, they've just broken. Looks like everyone's broken now and running away. Except, I'm guessing, to Hanawan. Yeah, he's still going, is he? He is. Alright, let's get Chris over and uh, Luther. Because my guys are just being torn up. There's almost no point. They're just losing. And everyone's just bleeding out now. It's so annoying. I hate the way that happens. Because it's like... Just for the... You know, for the sake of one unit surviving, my whole army's dying. Because <laughs> of that. Uh, the undead mechanics. Take the shot, man. He aim from here. He's obstructed. I'm trying to get the others out of the way, though. God, he's on such low health. <laughs> Just stop fighting him. My warriors are rallying. Oh, look at my army. It's just dying out. I'll just have to send them into melee then, I guess. Go, go, go. He's almost dead. Well, he went down like a champ. 144 kills. Hey, Luther got the final shot. I like when that happens. Damn, looks like we lost a lot of our pole arm units. Not too bad otherwise, though, I guess. Right? Yeah, not too bad. Lost the dogs. Didn't even see what happened to them. Pyrrhic victory, just like it said. A force to be reckoned. Alrighty, Pyrrhic victory, and we earned two thousand gold. Holy crap! We got ourselves a talisman, an obsidian amulet. Magic resistance 10%. We're we'll level up to level 7. So Tehenawan is defeated. The Azetizan is defeated, but this one got away. The Saurus Scar Veteran. The Croxidors were defeated as well. So I'm just trying to look at what's going to be left in the settlement. Not, Nothing too crazy. Two Saurus Warriors, some Skink Cohorts and stuff like that. Uh, we can get the Replenishment 18%. Oh yes. Or 196 gold. No, no, no. We'll take the replenishment. Let's assimilate them. them. Alright, enemy killed in battle. Is that design? That army's gone. Nice. They're down to just one army at least. The vampire cult. Now, sieging it says it's going to be a close victory. We actually won't lose any units. To their grave. But I think just to bolster our strength anyway, we'll just add some extras. We lost two gunners. Yeah, two gun units and a lot of melee. So we'll just get a couple of melee units back. Close victory. Let's just auto resolve it then, it's fine. A mass mad that is due. Great. So after gaining another 500 gold, just about. And we ranked up yet again. So we could sack the place or raise it. I think I'd love the 7,000, the 15% replenishment. But I need to just put these guys down. We have two other factions to fight and worry about. Um, so burn it all down, 100 infamy, 50 infamy per turn, and we can get some more techs and things like that. Also doing this will complete our objectives and give us another 7,000, I think. So let's raise it. 
Achieved victory over Lizardmen multiple times. Having a plan isn't always enough. Sometimes you need insight, sometimes foresight, but always martial strength. Leadership 5 when fighting against Lizardmen. Nice. Okay, good. And it's great. He actually backed off to the north, which means that's likely for that Itza army to come back out and, and grab us. Now, the enchanted item, a potion of speed. Acceleration, speed, reload skill, and vigor. The blue liquid in this small bottle blesses the imbiber. The imbiber, it says. Imbiber? I haven't heard that word. With a boost of... Preter... Preternatural? Speed? God, I haven't heard of either of those. Alright, there we have it. Cult of Sotek. See you later. So... That's a mount. Talisman. So where does the potion of speed go? It's an enchanted item, is it? Ah. We have the one that causes fear and terror. I like that one. We'll keep that. Maybe we'll give the potion of speed to uh, Penny. Prophet of Doom. That's for defeating Tehenna one. Beating the Lizardman plan buster. And then we're a narcissist. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, yeah, let's give ourselves some upgrades. So we also have the hunger for him. For Luther. Just like Penny. So to open this one, after spending six skill points in the previous group. So we spent f five. Avast G. Ability of Avast G. Augment to area. Extra leadership. Armor piercing weapon damage and missile damage. Hmm. That's pretty tempting. Just looking at this one though. We already do cause terror. These are just available singularly. They're not part of any chain. Okay. I think I'll leave the hunger. Just to be a bit different. Yeah, let's just... um, Let's see. So this one, drowned and bound. Extra speed for bloated corpses. What else could we get that would just... Ammunition for... Nah. Zombie pirate deckhands mob gets extra melee defense. And leadership and stuff later on. Okay, we'll go hell together with screws. Oh, we only got one skill point. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, Chris is also leveled up to level 7. He's got two skill points. Uh, we can start making him a bit stronger. So, what do we have? Missile resistance, 15%. Shark bait. Melee defense, 4. Hit points, 5%. And that just scales. Dead eyes and augment area. Constant around yourself. It's a passive ability. Extra armor piercing. Oh, yeah. Let's get that. Armor piercing missile damage and base missile damage. 10% stronger missiles if he's around them. That's really good. And we'll get this one as well to just strengthen him up. Although actually, what else? He ammunition for artillery. I've never run out of ammo, so I think I'm fine. Missile strength for artillery, though. In the army. That seems like a decent one, too. So let's get that. Even though it's only 2%, but... Missile... I mean, ca cannons... Strength is pretty high, so it's 400 already. So I guess adding every little percentage helps with those units quite a lot. Uh, I mean, it only got eight more, didn't it? But still. <laughs> Alright, so the plan is working. We just have to see what Gorok does. So we managed to defeat one faction. One race. No, sorry, one faction. Penny Wake is leveled up. Uh, she's got one skill point left available to her. Ghost Fleet, Replenishment Rate, and Aura Size of her army. Let's make her aura... Actually, yeah, we'll give her the terror effect. Cause she doesn't have that. And then also give her the enchanted item, the potion of speed. So that's going to allow us then to give acceleration speed, reload skill, and vigor. All right. Nice. Uh, but look at that for money. 7,900. So now we can level up the awakening to level uh, 3. It's going to take 5 turns. And we'll be able to get mortars then. Now the interesting thing, we're using, I'm using a mod, GCCM Unique Faction Capitals. Normally this faction capital, as you can see, has a, like, lighthouse on it. So I'm wondering when we'll get to see it. Because I think it's based on if we build it up. Level 3, you'd think maybe by around that time we'll see it soon. But the, that should mean that that place is basically fortified. And sorry, we should read it, just because I want to see actually what it does, rather than just getting it. So it's going to go from income th base income 360 up to 480. So from, with our modifiers currently, 491 up to 655. So that's pretty good. Uh, 150 increase, basically. Better tower projectiles, caged bats, growth 20. An extra slot, obviously, and then stronger garrison. Yeah. Depth guard, actually, garrison. That's really, really good. 
I totally forgot about Death Guard. Actually, they're going to be beasts once we get to them. Okay. Feeling pretty good. I know I'm taking a while, but take your time with these types of things. Um, yeah, I think that's basically it. Maybe we can see if we can leverage our money Cut for not the leaf. I saw trade. You as genuine competition. Nope. Count Noctilus still won't play ball. Uh, so that should mean objective-wise. Bada bada bada. Done. Occupy, loot, raise, or sack four different settlements. Luther Harkin has been battling with himself for some time, his fractured mind causing, recently causing him to lose grip of his undead pirate empire. Mutineers have emerged, insolently stealing part of his land, named for his exploits. The fog of his mind lifts just enough for Luther to unite his wills. It's time for the Pirate King to raid the hovels of any nearby landlubbers, murdering all before him on his way to regaining supremacy. It took me 26 turns to do that, but there we are. Ah, all right, so Gorok has decided to attack, turned around, went straight for us. Got a pretty good chance of winning, I think. Doesn't look like he's anything too crazy in his army. I thought that was a Carnosaur for a second, but it's just feral cold ones. A lot of skink skirmishers. I'm just wondering, what can I do to really bog them down, you know? I don't have any cavalry or anything fast moving. The bats aren't enough. So that's my biggest worry. The skin cohorts and things, if they group up, we'll throw in Lerithereal. Right back at him. <laughs> and another bloated corpse as well. Well, let's give it our best go we can. Now, I totally forgot, but Gorok is a legendary lord. So let's, now that we're actually encountering him on the battlefield, let's read about him. Quote, no fear, no pain, more scars for the old ones, end quote. Since the days of their creation, the Lizardmen have been at the forefront of the battle for the world's survival. While much has been lost over the ages of warfare against the many foes of order, the Lizardmen still fight on, unleashing their cold-blooded savagery upon any who stand in the way of their sacred mission. Ever primed for war, the Lizardmen march to battle with armies comprised of titanic reptilian beasts who lumber onto the battlefield surrounded by vicious cohorts on the ground as well as in the sky, all in aid of the Great Plan. Unsurprisingly, the greatest of the Lizardmen cohorts are stationed at a location of paramount importance to them and their fulfillment of the Old One's will, Itza, the First City. For buried in the labyrinth beneath the primordial temple city's wide Concourses are vaults containing many of the Old One's creations, including devices of such potential devastation that not even the Slan Mage Priests dare dwell upon their nature for too long. Itza is also home to the most powerful and ancient practitioners of magic to be found anywhere in the world, most notably the venerable relic priest Lord Croak, whose indomitable spirit has guarded Itza against the return of chaos ever since the Great Catastrophe. It's not only figures like Croak who help uphold the Old One's plan, however, for there are other champions at Itza with the same steadfast resolution. At the apex of Itza's tallest pyramid is the resting place of the Great White Lizard, Gorok. Like all Saurus, Gorok is a fighting machine, a creature wholly purposed for war and the slaughtering of enemies. Unlike most of his species, however, he has albino colorings and is oversized. His heavy frame corded with muscles covered with scales tough enough to deflect all but the most determined of sword thrusts. Indeed, Gorok has survived horrendous wounds and bears monstrous scars, yet never has injury hindered him from duty or prevented him from achieving victory. Now with his skink attendants, having hefted the mace of Olamak upon his shoulder, and with the shield of Eon strapped to his arm, Gorok has descended from his resting place once again. With Itza and indeed the whole of Lustria suffering new threats, the Great White Lizard is on the prowl. With cold-blooded purpose, he senses his role in the Great Plan to go where the fighting is thickest and help the Old One's children in battle wherever he can. Those that do not fall beneath the powerful blows of his mace shall be smashed aside by his massive shield or otherwise brutally crushed beneath his mighty tread. All right, there he is. The Great White Lizard is renowned for the stoicism he displays while simultaneously savaging his enemies in battle. Armor-piercing melee, a defender, predatory senses, and a juggernaut. 
It actually sounds right in my alley in terms of playstyle. The Vampire Coast, while thematically I think they're really, really cool, my favorite type of playstyle is actually one of Heavy Infantry. Uh, sort of like the Vampire ca Counts. Uh, maybe also Gorok, I've never played as him. I do generally like the Lizardman playstyle though. Uh, Alright, so here we are on this horrible, wet, rainy day. We're here to defend. He is attacking after all. We have our full army at our disposal. They're already combined because we are defending with the garrison rather than waiting on the garrison to come help us. Um, no idea what we're going to do here <laughs> against these guys, but ultimately the plan is obviously just to have a thick gun line. Now, our girl, Larithriel, is on the left and then just a normal bloated corpse on the right. At least of this uh, panel down on the bottom, just in case you're ever wondering. But I'll mention it as we send her in if we notice it. I hope she doesn't get blown up without my consent. <laughs> and without uh, my desire, I guess. So I just want to organize these a bit better. There we go. Alright, so we have two longer range handgun units. Now, I've never properly looked at what the main differences are between these. So the handguns obviously have way better range. We can hover over both and see. So the leadership is stronger of... Right, I see. It's stronger of the regular pirate gunnery mob. They have stronger melee and uh, attack and defense and a better charge bonus. But they lack range significantly by 55 and they lack a little bit of strength by 3. So I'll pop these guys in the back. Because they have their extra range. These guys could be at the front. And that way we can like line up their range to be almost the exact same. And they'll all fire at the same time. Actually, how is that hill? I think we should be further up on that hill to fire down into people. Sort of like there. I'm hoping this works. And we just have the regular deckhands mob on the sides then. And hopefully they can kind of circle around. Just a bit. The Rithriel is going to be on the left. Other bloated corpse on the right. We of course have Penny Wake in the battle. He can help us out. And then we've got two zombie pirate mob that can just come to the aid somewhere else if we need them. No gamble for me today. 21 Winds of Magic is good. Now, we also have our Gaze of Nagash. We can raise our Drowned Dead. We can Invocation of Neck and heal people, and then also improve pe people's melee attack and speed. Let's begin. She's ready to go with her little pistol. It's actually quite an intense battle. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous. It's not the end of the world if we lose this, but I don't want to lose Penny Wake. Uh, you can see the blood swamps in the distance as we were building it up. Look at it. The towering skyscrapers piercing the sky. Units moving around. Oh my god, I forgot a unit. Get back in. Now, worth mentioning as well, we've also got our... Our wind spell. Norse Roar. I'll wait till combat, till they get locked into combat. Actually, maybe not. Maybe I can time it. Just gotta do it at the right time. That was alright. Took him down quite a bit. Alright, we're in. Let's go. I was thinking of blocking them by raising a unit there.
Gonna turn sideways at these ones. If we can get them to group up and send that... Go on, Larithereal. You're in. I want you to go right now. It's a bit of a pile there. It's a pile enough for me. Obviously destroying our unit, but that's fine. Buff their melee attack. Let's do the same with this one over on the right. Keep this unit clear. Just keep everyone clear for a moment. Almost tempted to give it that speed benefit or something. Oh my god. <laughs> Frame rate died along with him. There we go. Let's raise some drowned dead on that on those missile units and then start pushing. Got our Norse Roar Wind Spell. We'll call that in one more time. Nice. Going pretty well, actually. I just don't know what I'm going to do with all these skinks. There's so many of them. How can I chase them down? We just have to outrange them, don't we? I think. Might just have to fall back with some of our melee then. Actually, you know what? I have no idea. There he is. He's over there. Gorok. I can't imagine he's going to be doing many, many missile spells, though. I'm going to turn the entire gun line to fire on him. Fire a magic missile at him, just for the fun of it. Actually... Yeah. Alright, good. Everyone's firing on him now. And I'm just going to keep trying to bog down. And let's also give him miscast chance, just in case he does try something as his health gets lower. And then we'll call it another thing here. Drown dead, just to keep those missile units bogged down constantly. We're firing everything we have on him now. He's taking a battering. God damn. Oh no, he's running right for her. Get out of there. God, he is a beast. He's taking so much firepower. He's down to a thousand nine hundred. Come on. Crap, this isn't looking good, guys. My plan's not working. <laughs> their missiles are just too strong. Or oh, sorry, their infantry are just too strong. It's, yeah, my missiles aren't aren't good enough. I'm trying to now run behind my own units. Bog them down and start shooting on them again. How is he doing? He's, he's pretty low. Just keep firing on him, I guess. I feel like if we can break him, maybe the rest will break. I don't know. Yes, he's, he's really low. Come on. Damn, it's like he's about to break and then he's like, nah, I'm feeling fine, actually. <laughs> God damn, he's chasing down Penny. Did he break? I think he broke. Come on. It's 
insane. His arm is just like so thick. Nine hundred and eighty. I've got nothing to say. I'm just waiting for him to die. <laughs> but he just won't go down. Can we raise any more units? We can raise one more if we get another one uh, Winds of Magic and maybe help. Alright, we have to focus back up and just keep fighting the units that are here. He comes back then, so be it. So they're gone. I hate skinks, man. They're so annoying. They're so fast. <laughs> it's like fighting ho uh, horse archers or something. Damn, I can't believe without Gorok they're still fighting like this. Oh, yes, they broke. Oh my god, it'd be so amazing if we get a chain route. Please, please, please. <laughs> it's so close to happening. They're like all running away. I can't believe it. Come on. <laughs> I'm nearly out of my last melee unit though. That's the problem. That's it. There's no point just chasing him, I gotta like actually kill some. I'm looking at this bar, it's still like dead even. <laughs> this is awesome, <laughs> fuck's sake. They're coming from all directions and they're just batting them away and hitting them. Leave me alone, for God's sake! Oh my god, my own unit came back, that's crazy. Because the vampire counts, it's very unusual. Or coast. I think we might have it. I don't want to speak out of turn though, I've seen these things turn very quickly. She's running straight into them. Go on, girl. Although we need to we need to keep you out here so you can keep these guys happy. Wait a sec, what's that? That's speed and melee attack, I don't need that. Healing though I could use. Yes, I can't believe it. Awesome! Wow. What a battle. <laughs> I'd like to be a little bit louder if I could, but my girlfriend's sleeping. And uh, it's kind of late at night, but trust me, I'm very excited for that battle. That was awesome. I wish I could be jumping up and down, screaming right now. It was pretty damn cool. I can't believe he managed to pull it out of the bag. I thought it was over. That's kind of why it went quiet. I was like, ah, oh, it's not looking good. <laughs> well done, Penny Wake. Holy crap. Well done. All right, let's end it there. All right, there we have it. A Pyrrhic victory may have possibly been in vain. Gorok did manage to get away. 800 gold almost, so it's not bad. Penny Wake leveling up. Level 7. Hmm. Now, how much replenishment can we get? 12%, but it's only for the units that are alive, so not really worth it. 
Treasury, a hundred, a thousand. Oh, it's pretty tempting for the treasury, but I'm actually going to go with the loyalty because Pennywake's loyalty has been fluctuating a bit. Am I? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because you can only gain loyalty by taking pirate codes. It's probably not going to be able to do that anytime soon. So we'll do that. Take the treasure. The blood's mine. So he's on land taking attrition. That's pretty good, but it means that he's going to combine just absolutely destroy us. Obviously, there's no garrison anymore. Your prestige grows, my lord. News of your conquests spreads far and wide. Your developing power is noted by even the most distant of kings and bestial lords. Hmm. Alright, chapter successful. We've already read that. It's the same thing that we just read beforehand. So 7,000 gold. We now have 13,000 in the bank. Penny Wake has gained a trait. Movable Mountain. Defeated Gorok. Not all mountains are immovable. Locate its weakness at SWAT line and turn the crack into a yawning chasm. Upkeep reduced for Lord's Army. Leadership increased, 5. And attribute expert charge defense. When bracing, this unit negates the charge bonus of any attacker. Now the problem here is that Gorok is still quite a threat. Even though he's got basically no health on his own, on himself. He can't get to the Awakening, so that's fine. But he could come back and attack here. Now the garrison's going to be replenishing itself. So I guess not the worst thing. We should probably just, to be safe, raise one or two dead. Um, and that way we'll be able to just make sure we can beat his uh, attack if he does come at us. He could also hop back out into the ocean, I guess. We've got another um, pirate treasure. A personality has taken over the coward. Speed, 15%. Missile strength, 15%. Leadership, negative 15. We've read that before. New chapter objective issued. Occupy, loot, raise, or sack eight different settlements. We'll have to check the other ones. Uh, in our raised dead here, let's see. I guess just some standard melee to hold things off. Uh, fell bats. All oh, right, not not deck droppers. Let's get these three. I reckon that's enough to hold with all the garrison and everything. That's that's seven units. Sorry, ten units of garrison, right? Just that they're under strength. I'd just be worried about those skinks. We don't have any dogs to get. We do have mortars now as well, actually. But we'll start recruiting a regular army also. So we're going to get two dogs to help chase skinks and some zombie pirate deckhands mob with pole arms. All right. Now Luther can make his way back too. And he can actually start building up his ship when he does. He's got so much money. Unfortunately, we won't be able to... Uh, get into proper territory to replenish the way I'd like to. They can't reach me either. That's great. So we'll just sit here, replenish in our encampment stance, and just recruit what we can uh, for now. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. Just get those two units, the ones that we lost. I want more melee, to be honest. I guess there's no harm getting all three, sorry. Uh, right, and then, yeah, shipbuilding. Let's see. We can go up to level three now. 5,700 gold. Maybe improve this so we can get better uh, units on recruitment. Yeah, so we can improve our ship. I'm thinking of getting the Top Gallant Royal. Top Gallant Royal. It becomes a Moonraker sail at the end. So it's the, which sail do you want? This top sail gives us the miscast chance reduction and movement range 20%. This one gives us 30% and the Winds of Magic starting amount 20 this also says all the armies in the province. This is just for yourself. So pro I'm probably still going to go with this one. We also then have the helm. Reduce attrition and reduce the cost of recruitment. Or add vampiric corruption. Eight is a lot. Remember, we're going to be going to places that definitely will need that, I think, in future. And then upkeep reduced by 10%. Probably going to do that one. But not going to start it now. We don't need the... Uh, Vampire Corruption at all. Growth and Replenishment Rate, those are pretty tempting. And then at the end, you actually are able to get a Necroflex, Necroflex Colossus. I'm going to start with this one, though. The Top Gallant Royal. Winds of Magic Campaign Movement Range, 10%. On top of that, we're going to get this. This only takes one turn also. And that spends pretty much all our money. Ahoy! And then we're waiting on this to be improved as well. So money's going up. It should be fine. And then hopefully we can start focusing on the... On the uh, Order of Lormasters, Techless. Now we have Gorok's other army here. 
My madness is not weak, we could man. chase down Gorok, make sure we kill him, or let Penny Wake do that, and we could just Curse turn around and push into psyche. the southern great jungle. It's just a kind of annoying because it's like, oh man, I want to be setting up pirate coasts and attacking the coasts and stuff. That's the way you have to handle it, I guess. Is there anything else that we haven't looked at and we need to do? What's our infamy? Our infamy is actually 817, so we could get another technology should we wish. Let's have a quick look over them. Recruit rank is increased for mortars, carronades, and deck gunner units. It's tempting considering we might be getting mortars pretty soon. Range increased for zombie pirate gunnery mob and deck droppers, 20%. Upkeep reduced for certain high tier units, I think. Grants the powder monkey follower. The, the follower himself adds armor piercing weapon damage for zombie pirate gunnery mob and deck dropper units. Hmm. It's actually pretty good. Missile strength, 10% all characters. Yeah, I'm liking the sound of that one. We have that already. Yeah, let's go with Powder Monkey. And we'll give Luther the monkey. <laughs> I have sailed the world. Alright, cool. So we've got our four treasure maps. The fourth one is now added again somewhere up in the World's Edge Mountains, so not to worry. Been kind of unlucky with those treasure maps, to be honest. Oh yeah, I said I'd look at the other objectives. So we've already done one, earn the following amount from raiding. So that says, it was Luther's endless lust for power and riches that led him into the schizophrenic pre pre uh, predicament, and an innate greed for gold still runs through many of his personalities. A raiding campaign would go a long way to silence some of the voices, for now, at least. Maintain 30 units in total. Once we bring our numbers back up for Penny's army, that'll be fine. Maintain control of three provinces. Either direct ownership, vassals, or military allies. At the end of your turn, have an income of three grand. Our current is 963. Reach rank 10 with Luther. Okay, the province one might be challenging to do. In fact, it might even be... No, it's not impossible. Because we need to take eight more settlements, right? Raise, occupy, loot, or sack eight settlements. So, if we just went for... There's four here, for instance. And two there. We could do that all in one go. If we con conquered all of this. So that kind of works. So maybe we should try that. I'm well, not at war with the um, Dark Elves, but it's only a matter of time. Alright, let's end the turn there. So, Gorok has come back and challenged us yet again. This will be a Pyrrhic victory. Um, I think it would be kind of a boring fight. And I think it's fine. I think we'll easily win it. I'm surprised it's actually Pyrrhic. But I'm okay with losing the units. I think we should just end it. It kind of takes away from the cool battle we've had this episode, I think. So we'll just end it. So that's Gorok defeated yet again. Loot gained 1,300. So we lost two melee units and one gunner unit. Fair play to them. They got 168 kills. That's kind of incredible. Um, yeah, ransom the captives. We don't need to replenish. We could get even more loyalty, though. Another loyalty, bringing us up to seven. That way, Pennywake is going to be loyal for a long time to come. Or we'll just take the gold. I'll take the loyalty. I like the loyalty. Let's go with that. Take the booty. Alright, we got our follower, the Powder Monkey. It's an extremely dirty and dangerous job, but someone has to do it. After all, even with the highest rated Admiral... Sorry, after all, even the highest rated admiral had to start somewhere. King of the ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, so, details, master gunner, let's add it here. Armor piercing weapon damage, 25% for zombie pirate, gunnery mob, and deck dropper units. Now that we're level 3, a lot of these things can actually level up as well, which is pretty cool. Increasing movement range even further. Crazy. We're going to hop back into our own territory and begin as replenishing. Or as Carl Pilkington says, replenishing. Don't know if I need to go that far, actually. I'm just trying to think. Is it worth... Is it, should I risk it? Yeah, I'll just go there. I think it's fine. Just to the edge. As long as we're in our territory, it's okay. Decades forward. I am the Big replenishment king. gains in our own territory. Huge, in fact. Alright, nice. Better. And that will bring us up to strength 20. Now, we can actually start recruiting the lost... Zombie Pirate Deckhand's mob. So I might just... 
Well, they're going to be full strength anyway. I was going to say merge them in, but I don't need to merge them in. They're going to be full strength, so I'll just disband. My mind rages. Maybe two of them? My madness is not weakness. And get them back. All right, cool. Now, I know what you're thinking. You could merge them, because if I do get attacked, that means I'll have it now, not next turn. I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Aminar attacks the Forbidden Coast. Okay, that's really far away, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the plan now is to head straight for the Fuming Serpent with Penny Wake. Maybe just wait a turn or two to like level up and get some actual units. Um, we are recruiting two already. Oh yeah. Yeah, just get some more gunners. The crew are restless. Can we get the better version? No, we don't actually have them yet. Okay. And she has the dogs and everything. Okay. You just got to change your strategy a little bit for the high elves. But yeah, we'll use these ones. So yeah, after this then, we'll just start pushing towards the Fuming Serpent. I think I'll take it because ultimately our objectives want us to... I think it's just good to have the entire coastline here and then we'll set up coves elsewhere. It'd be nice to set up some coves up this way or across the ocean. Of course, we're still at war with Ark in the Black. No idea what's going on over there. And do we have the infamy to spend on another technology? Not yet, so we'll just resume getting salvage crews. Alright, so I think we'll have to leave it there. Pretty successful few couple of turns. I know it took things quite slowly, but they're really enjoyable battles. And um, we've defeated the Cult of Sotek. Now we look to push into and towards the southern great jungle to defeat Itza and to defeat Gorok once and for all. Hopefully actually do get to fight him again, because I'd like Luther to be able to get that trait that we just got as well. And maybe we could get this, portholes, that would also give us better units. So I'll decide that kind of in between turns and in the next episode. But yeah, as we then push in, we'll start spreading vampiric corruption here. There doesn't seem to be any. It's zero, so that's going to be a bit rough for us. Although I'm going to be raising the towns, not taking them. And then hopefully with Itza gone, we can just largely focus on getting our coast sorted. And then looking beyond the ocean to see where we can go to set up pirate coves and the like. Now this, actually I just realized, yeah, this um, high elf lord just passed right by beyond us there. Not stopping at Poxmarsh. Doubt they're going to get to the awakening or do anything there. So we should be fine. Economy's looking good as well. Money's decent and um, this is getting better. We'll actually be able to level it up with two. So looking good. Things are looking up. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. Remember to join my Discord, discord.gg slash ROP if you want to talk with me more directly. I'm always responding and reading comments though as well. And uh, if you've got any suggestions or you just want to find others to talk Total War or other games with. Thank you again. And I'll see you in the next one.